In this easy ad video lecture, we will take a look at moment of inertia, wherein we are going to learn about the moment of inertia of a plane area, the parallel axis and perpendicular axis theorem. We will also learn about moment of inertia of regular plane areas. In order to design the various components of engineering structures, engineers are required to select different materials and different cross sections. The internal resistance of any section depends upon the material in use, area of the cross section and orientation of the cross section with respect to the given loading. Consider the following example. A thin flat plank of wood is being supported by two supports as shown. The load P is acting at the center of the plank. In this case, the plank may bend towards or break depending upon the magnitude of the load. Now, the same plank is held vertically and then supported by two supports as shown. The load P is applied at the center of the plank. Now we can observe that the plank does not break down or bend. We observe that the same wooden plank behaves in two different ways when its orientation is changed. This phenomenon can be explained technically by the term moment of inertia. The load carrying capacity of a member depends upon its moment of inertia. Thus the moment of inertia of a body plays an important role in deciding the orientation of cross section to bear the appropriate loads. Let us now learn about moment of inertia of a plane area. Moment of inertia of an elementary area about any axis is the product of the area of the element and square of its distance from the axis. This is called as the second moment of area or moment of inertia. In simple words, we will first take the moment of the area about the axis and then take the moment of this moment about the same axis, thus taking the second moment of the area. To find the general expression for moment of inertia of an area, we will consider a plane area as shown. Let dA be the area of an element inside the plane area. Let the element be located at a perpendicular distance r from the axis AB. Moment of the elemental area about the axis AB equals r into dA. Now, the moment of the moment of area, that is, the second moment of area, is equal to r square into dA. Hence, the second moment of the entire plane can be found using the following integral. This is commonly referred to as a moment of inertia. This is the general expression for a moment of inertia of plane areas. The units of moment of inertia are millimeter raised to 4, centimeter raised to 4, or meter raised to 4, depending upon the unit of linear measurement. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Now, we will take a look at some of the basic theorems used to find the moment of inertia of plane areas. Parallel axis theorem. It states that the moment of inertia of a plane area with respect to any axis in its plane is equal to the sum of moment of inertia with respect to a parallel centroidal axis and the product of the total area and the square of the distance between the two axes. Mathematically, IAB equals IG plus AR square, where A is the area of the plane figure and R is the perpendicular distance between the two axes. Let us now prove this theorem. Consider an element strip of area DA located at a distance Y from the centroidal axis. We can now find the moment of inertia of the plane area about the axis AB using basic definition, that is, area of the strip multiplied by distance square. This can be further simplified as follows. Let us now analyze three terms in the above expression. The first term is equal to the moment of inertia about centroidal axis, that is IG. The second term can be simplified as shown. Here, the term summation YDA upon A is the distance of the centroid from the centroidal axis, which is zero. Since the centroidal axis passes through G, hence the second term is found to be zero. We can finally simplify the third term to be equal to A into R square. Therefore, IAB is equal to IG plus AR square. 
Thus, we have proved the parallel access theorem. Perpendicular access theorem. It states that the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the plane containing two axes perpendicular to each other and passing through their point of intersection is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of the two axes. Mathematically, IZZ is equal to IXX plus IYY. IZZ is also known as polar moment of inertia. It is defined as the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the plane of area. It is represented as J0. Therefore, J0 equals IXX plus IYY. Let us prove this theorem now. Let us consider an elemental area DA located at the coordinates XY from the origin O. If R is the straight line distance from the origin, then R square equals X square plus Y square. The element would hence be at a distance X from the Y axis, Y from the X axis, and at a distance of R from the perpendicular axis passing through O, that is the Z axis. We can directly denote the moment of inertia about the ZZ axis as the integral R square into dA. But we know that R square equals X square plus Y square. Also, we know that the moment of inertia about YY axis is equal to integration of X square into dA. And moment of XX axis is equal to integration of Y square into dA. Hence, we find moment of inertia about ZZ axis to be equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about the yy and xx axis respectively. That is, izz equals ixx plus iyy. Hence, we have proved the perpendicular axis theorem. The table given shows the moment of inertia of various regular plane areas. Consider a rectangle of base B and depth D with the centroid at point G. The centroidal axis xgxg is also shown. Then, the moment of inertia of the rectangle about the centroidal axis is given by BD cube upon 12. Now, using parallel axis theorem, we can find the moment of inertia about an axis passing through the base as BD cube upon 3. Next, we will take a look at a triangle. It has a base B, height H, its centroid is at G, and its centroidal axis is marked. Then, the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis is given as BH cube upon 36. Similarly, using parallel axis theorem, we find moment of inertia about the base of the triangle as BH cube upon 12. Let us now consider a circle of radius R with the centroid G acting at the center and the centroidal axis XGXG and YGYG are also shown. Then, the moment of inertia of the circle about the centroidal axis is given as pi r raised to 4 upon 4. Similarly, the table also shows the basic formulae to find moment of inertia of a semicircle about the centroidal axis and some further variations. The above table gives us the basic formulae to find the moment of inertia of standard geometrical figures about their centroidal axes respectively. These formulae form the base to find moment of inertia of many composite figures and further calculations. Hence, these formulas are deemed important. Let's have a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. First, we learnt about moment of inertia of a plane area. Moment of inertia of an elementary area about any axis is the product of the area of the element and square of its distance from the axis. This is called as the second moment of area or moment of inertia. Then. We derive the general expression for moment of inertia of plane areas. Then, we learned about the parallel axis theorem. It states that the moment of inertia of a plane area with respect to any axis in its plane is equal to the sum of moment of inertia with respect to a parallel centroidal axis and the product of the total area and the square of the distance between the two axes. Further, we also proved the mathematical expression of the parallel axis theorem, that is, IAB equals IG plus AR square. Then, we learn the perpendicular axis theorem. It states that the moment of inertia 
about an axis perpendicular to the plane containing two axes perpendicular to each other and passing through their point of intersection is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of the two axes. Further, we also proved the mathematical expression of the perpendicular axis theorem that is IZZ equals IXX plus IYY. Then, we learned about polar moment of inertia. It is defined as the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the plane of area and is expressed as J0 equals IXX plus IYY. Finally, we learned about moment of inertia of standard geometric figures like rectangle, triangle, circle and semicircle about the centroidal axis. These formulae form the base to find moment of inertia of many composite figures and further calculations. Hence, these formulae are essential to further study moment of inertia.